are living in a glorious time. What a move of God happening on earth. Look, look, with all that's going on, there is something glorious happening. The gospel is being preached and millions are getting saved. And I have a word for you today. No weapon, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that will arise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're his child and Jesus loves you. Oh, how he cares for you. We are living in a great, great season, a prophetic season. And the Jewish people are about to celebrate atonement. This is so important that you understand what is happening and the time we're living in. Steve Muncy is with me, and I'm so glad because the Lord has given you a word for, the, for God's people about this. You know, as you read the Bible, precious people of God, here's what you find. In Christ Jesus, the Passover has been fulfilled. The law of Moses fulfilled. Circumcision has been done away with, but the only thing that has not been canceled is the law of the offerings. Yes. What is so amazing is when Jesus gave us the laws of his kingdom, he reaffirmed the law of giving. Now, we see the law of giving mentioned all throughout the Old, the old Covenant. God says, do not appear before me empty. Now, something, well, that's Old Testament. I have news for you. The Lord Jesus reaffirmed it in the new because when he gave us the laws of his kingdom called the Beatitudes, what did he say in Luke 6? Give. Giving is still important. In fact, it was reaffirmed so strongly. And just be before I have you minister so powerfully on this, but you know what? I said this to our friend Don Price a few days ago. I said, the Lord reaffirmed it so mightily. It was the first message that the disciples heard after the, the day of Pentecost. That's right. 3,000 get saved, 5,000 get saved. And the next thing you know, they begin talking about now sell your homes, sell your property, and give the money to the church. That's in Acts 4. That was one of the first things they heard. And then we see Acts 15, when the question arose about circumcision. Yes. And we see in Galatians, when Paul dis discussed it, he said, even though they, they said, let's not put any burdens on the disciples, let's not give them what we could not ob you know, obey ourselves, but they said, do not forget the poor, yes. meaning the law of giving was reestablished, re reaffirmed. So God's precious people, you must understand, the law of giving is a fixed law still. Yes. And today we are facing a great historical season. Why? This is, this is uh, probably the most important day to God, which is the Day of Atonement. Uh, we, as Christians, need to celebrate it. And, and, and it's not really the Jewish uh, holiday Although, thank God, the Jews have made it a holiday because God said, this is my day. It's not the church's day. It's not even the Jewish what day. What do you mean by God said my God day? God said, I have three important days, Passover, Pentecost, and atonement. He rules economically. He rules with decisions. He rules from those three days within a 12-month period by giving people a moderate blessing and giving them a double portion blessing. Passover and Pentecost are in the former part of the year. Now we live by a Gregorian calendar from January to December. God doesn't live by January to December. And precious saints understand there are seven feasts. There's Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruit, which, right. are, which are kind of the same feast. Right. Then there's Pentecost, which stands by itself. Right. Then there's trumpets, atonement, yes. and the Feast of Tabernacles. Yes, that's in the, that's in the fall, which is the Day of Atonement right. we're talking about. Right, right. And these, going, feasts, these feasts are so important to God. And God says that if you honor me on these feasts, I do specific things. A lot of people do not know that Jesus Christ was born on the Day of Atonement. He was baptized on the Day of Atonement. No, I didn't know that either. Yes, and, wow. the, and the Day of Atonement also was the day in which man was created on the sixth day. And when we come into the season of Atonement, which is the October season, that is the birthday of the earth. Because in the seven days that there was creation, 
on the sixth day he made it atonement. See, atonement is, is a, and then it, it, it means one, a, one, men, A-T-O-M-E-N-T. -E so the atonement stands for at one men. That means God says, I'm going to be one with man. And on the day of, that is powerful. of atonement, God makes all the decisions for the next 12 months. And God says, this is what I will do. Now, this is God talking. This is not in uh, anyone's interpretation. Very simply found in Leviticus and also in Exodus and also in Deuteronomy. And Jesus celebrates the atonements in the New Testament and the feast and Pentecost right, and exactly. Passover. In fact, one, one time his disciples says, don't go to Jerusalem and, and honor the feast. Don't go for atonement because they want to kill you. And the Bible says that Jesus knew how important it was to celebrate it, that he secretly went in. Do you know that in the millennium we will still celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles? Definitely. It's in the Bible, yeah. That's right. Well, and here's another great thing, is that uh, uh, Passover has been fulfilled. Of course, the first Passover was when, you know, Israel left Egypt when Correct. they put blood on the doorpost yeah. and the angel passed over. Well, that's been fulfilled. Jesus is the Lamb of God, like the Lamb that was slain to put on the blood, right. the blood on the doorpost. Jesus is the Lamb of God. So He has fulfilled Passover. Pentecost is not a denomination. It means 50, 50 days after that's right. Passover. That's when Moses went up to Mount Sinai and, 50 days and, later and, and got the, the exactly. commandments. Yeah. And that was the day the church was, was born. Yeah. born. But atonement has not yet been memorialized. Why? How true. Because that's the blowing of the trumpets. The Bible says we don't know the day nor the hour. And that's true because uh, the day uh, that it is in California is, day, is different from the day in China. The, the hour in California is different from the hour in New York. But Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, brethren, be not ignorant of the seasons. That's correct. For you know that the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. So if the Lord decides to come, no doubt it will be in the season of atonement because that's the blowing of the trumpets, that's the gathering of the people, Correct. and that is the day in which is the what they call the all day. The all day is Yom Kippur, or in the Bible, it is the day of atonement. Now what is powerful, Pastor, is this, is that, that Pentecost and Passover is is in the beginning of the springs. And uh, uh, to not to confuse you, God doesn't start on January 1st to say, and now this is a happy new year. He doesn't do that because his beginning is Passover. Right. Now here's what he says. Exactly he says, right. in, beginning on Passover for six months, I will bless you moderately. Notice this that the second and the third quarters of business in the world is not as good as the first quarter and the fourth quarters. The stock market adjusts every October. Why is that? Because God has put within the earth, He has put the seasons of seed time and harvest, and in the first part of the six months is moderation, that we go on vacations, we spend our money, we don't go get a lot of overtime, the people don't get a lot of overtime because it's summertime from... Easter to October. Now in October on the Day of Atonement, he says, I will put a double portion upon you, meaning that there's double anointing. Church growth is better. The first quarter and the fourth quarter is better in all businesses. Um, the economics, we go back to school, all of our education, all of our habits in society and the world is more, if I can use the word anointed, or is more aggressive between the atonement, which is in October, to Passover. So here's what he says. Here's what he says in the Word. He says in Joel, he describes it right here. Now you, you got to understand, Pastor, that I'm a, I'm a fourth generation preacher's kid, and I've always been preached to that Joel 2 is futuristic. You know, the last days are coming, the last days are coming. Well, you can minister that. that I'm not taken away from that teaching, but if you will look at this, it will identify when he gives the double portion, and he identifies the month. Please read that. I'm going to read it. He says, but be glad you children of Zion, rejoice in the Lord God. I'm reading from Joel 2, 23. He hath given you the former rain which moderately. Which is Passover. Which correct. is Passover right. to 
October or from April to October. He will come, he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Where's the first month? It's October. Because all the Jewish people will tell you on Yom Kippur in October, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. In the next few days, every Jewish person in the world will say, Happy New Year, Yom Kippur. Because October is the first month. So God says, now look everybody, don't be spending your money from Passover to October. Live moderately. But when it comes to October, I'm going to put a double portion upon you beginning in the first month. I'll give you the former rains and the latter rains. Then he goes right down, right down the list and says, now this is what I'm going to do for you. He says, your floor shall be full of wheat and your vat shall overflow with wine and oil. You know what that means? God says, I am going to increase your finances. I'm going to get involved in your finances and I'm going to increase them when? Beginning in the first month when the double portion comes. The second thing he says he's going to do, I will restore to you the years that the locusts, the enemy has stolen. Now, I'm talking to somebody today, you've been sick. God says, if you honor the most important day, which is the day of atonement, which is coming up in the next few days, he says, I will restore if sickness has been a part of you for six months, three weeks, whatever, I will restore that to you. Then he says, he goes on, he, he goes right down the list what he's going to do. He says, and you shall eat plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God. For he had dwelt wondrously with you. Meaning, the, the next thing he's going to do is that he performs spirit, uh, special miracles that you don't even pray for. Because he says, I'm just going to deal wondrously with, wondrously with you. You know, the Bible says, your eyes not seen, your ears not heard, nor has it been recorded in your heart. What God hath prepared for them that love him. That's right. Then he says, here, here's, the, here's the fifth thing that he does. He says, you shall know that I'm in the midst of Israel, and I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people will never be ashamed. You don't have to be ashamed of me because my divine presence is going to be with you. And let me tell you what I feel. Right now while I'm on this set with you, Pastor, the Holy Spirit has spoken to me that the people that will honor the Day of Atonement, and, and I will tell you how you honor it, that those that are watching that have relatives in prison, that the Holy Spirit has spoken to me strongly that the divine presence of God is not only going to come upon you in this double portion time and season, but the Holy Spirit is going to take its divine presence and you have been praying for a relative in the prison. God is going to send His divine angel right into that prison and he's going to minister to that relative that you have in prison. And somebody may say, well, you don't understand, my relative is on death row. So was Peter. Peter was on death row. Herod was going to kill him but had to stop because of the Passover feast and he killed James the day before. So Peter sat in prison in locks and Monday morning he was going to die. That was on a Thursday. He was on death row. But guess what? an angel appeared, walked in, and the angel took Peter out of prison. I'm here to tell you that God is going to do something divinely with you who have someone of a relative or a loved one in prison, His divine presence. Then He says, and the sixth thing He's going to do is that I'm going to pour out My presence on your sons and your daughters. That means that if you've been praying for your son or your daughter, or you've been wanting an increase of anointing or a blessing upon your son and daughter, he says, I'm going to pour out my presence upon your sons and your daughters. And he says, I'm going to give them visions. I'm going to give them the ability to proceed. You know, prophecy is pro Proceeding, You can see the future. I'm going to give them insight about their future. Your children who are rebellious and they are in a position that they're just always, you know, they're just fighting the 14, 15, 16, 17 years of age. And for some of you that haven't never had a teenager, oh, I pray that you get to have one someday because it is very, very interesting <laughs> because you've got to turn it over to God. And God says, I'm going to pour out my <laughs> presence upon the sons and daughter. And number seven, here's the number seventh one. He says in His Word, He says these words, It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. God says, in this double portion, any time that you need me, I'm going to have a special anointing of deliverance. Now the Bible says, all of this happens 
on the Day of Atonement. Now, you may say, well, I haven't heard this teaching. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, this, is, this is new to me, and I've been a Christian. Well, can I tell you that Constantine in 325 A.D. stopped this teaching? He said we must stop Why this teaching. Why did he do that, Steve? Well, he was very much against the Jews. He was the emperor of the world. He did, he did get saved, but two weeks before he died. That's in history. Wow. But he, he, you know, he's the one pastor that made every preacher take the oath of poverty because he saw how powerful it was when people would come before the feast of the Lord and honor God. Did you know that Titus, you know when he burned down the Jerusalem in 70 A.D.? Yeah. He did it on the Day of Atonement. You know Hitler started the war on the Day of Atonement. Do you know that Satan is so, that's the reason why people are going under pressure right now. Everybody right now is feeling pressure of some kind because Satan knows God's timing because Satan has lived with God a lot longer than anybody on the earth. He knows that God's going to make a decision on the Day of Atonement. And that's the reason why the viewer, you that are watching, are going through all the pressure you're going through with your children, your marriage, your money, your situation. Why? Because Satan says, if I can abort, if I can get a person to not see the season. See, if the farmer plants, if you plant tomatoes and you get sick in the bed and you don't hurry up and get out there and pick those tomatoes before they're ripe, you know, while they're ripe, they'll fall to the ground and rot. So what can God's people do right now since we're just a few minutes left? Here's what, here's what God says. Here's what God says you do. He says, on the day of atonement, stand before me with the offering. Now, in Deuteronomy 16, 16, he said, don't come before me empty. And he, he meant during the feast. He says, during the feast, which is coming up the next few days, and this is the last offering of the feast of this year, he said, stand before me and do not stand before me empty-handed. Wow. wow, wow. Now, the reason why God says that is because everything you have, God gave it to you anyway. Exactly. And God is saying, I want you to come. Now, you say, why do we have to come with an offering? Because God only trusts the heart. And you see, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And when you reach into your treasure, you're actually holding your heart before God. And, and, and the Spirit of the Lord has really spoken strong to me, uh, Pastor, because, um, because during this season, which is the most important season to God, and this day is so important to God. You know, for 4,000 years, He only allowed one priest to come in on that day to visit His presence That's on the right. Day of Atonement. Right, when you stand before the Lord, let me tell you what I feel. The Lord has brought us together. This ministry is reaching the world, and many thousands are experiencing the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit has spoken a strong word. He is going to give you the double portion in the first month, providing that you say, Lord, I stand with the offering." And right now, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And I feel very strong with my discernment. My, I feel very strong about the discernment of this, that everyone that is watching right now, that you pick up the phone and say, I'm going to give my atonement offering. I am going to stand before the Lord. And this is what we're going to do. And Pastor, on the day of atonement, on the, on, and the week of atonement, on this is your day, you have the altar on this Jerusalem set over to the side. That's right. That you will kneel and you will take the offerings of the people and you will say, Lord, this is the offering, the offering of atonement that the people have called in. And I, this is not just a, this is not an average offering. This is not just an offering of, of support to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write my, uh, you know, check that I write every month to Pastor Benny Hinn. No, no, this is a significant, this is a sacred, holy offering, the offering of atonement. I want you to step to the phone. I want you to pick the phone up as you are dialing the number that, are on, that is on the screen. I want you to begin to think, Lord, I feel strong about giving this atonement offering. And the Holy Spirit is speaking very, very strong right now. And I feel that you need to just say, I'm going to give, I'm going to give a 
dollar offering. Why? Why $120? Well, there was 120 people on the day of Pentecost on that special feast. 12 is governmental order. The number 12 means governmental order. And when you give, and numbers mean a lot to God because he, he named a book after numbers. And every number is significant to God. 12 means governmental order. When you give that offering of $120 as the atonement offering, God is going to establish these seven principles in order for you so that the double portion will come upon you. I promise you that today if I have ever heard the accuracy of understanding what God wants us to do, this is the moment. I need you to go to your phone and say, this is my offering. Now there's somebody watching me, your business, God is blessing your business. And the Lord is speaking to somebody to give $12,000, $1,200. But you go to your phone and you say, this, Pastor Benny, put it on the altar. This is my atonement offering. And I'm going to give this $120. It's sacred. And Lord, you said if we stand before you, you would give us the double portion. Think about it. The double portion. Your finances are going to be blessed. There's going to be restoration. Everything that the devil has stolen from you. God says, I am going to put my divine presence upon you. He says, I am going to do miraculous. I'm going to deal with you wondrously. And then he says, I'm going to touch your sons and your daughters. And then he says, I'm going to give you the opportunity to have the power of deliverance that anytime you call upon me, mm. it will happen. Mm. Please go to the phone right now. You must because you cannot go past the Day of Atonement, which is in the middle of October of this season. Please go now and watch God. And when Benny Hinn kneels at the altar, he's going to be able to say, Lord, this is the people's atonement offering. We stand before you. And friend, what you've been going through the last hundred days, you know what? Your tears are fixing to dry up and you're fixing to get happy. Man. That darkness is fixing to turn into light. Man. That flood, there's a standard fixing to be raised Man. up. And Thank the you, moment Jesus. that you say, this is my offering, watch out. The devil knew you were going to respond. That's the reason why you've been going through what you've been going through. But guess what? The double portion is coming now. Step to that phone and give the atonement offering. I want you to know something, all of you precious saints. Whenever I have faced a struggle in my life, the Holy Spirit always spoke at a special moment and said, make a vow to God, and I have. Yes. Do you know that we were in Israel back in the 60s when I did not know a thing about this? As a young man who was not even saved my father wanted to get out of Israel because it was getting very bad at the time. And I prayed because there was no way out. And I prayed and I said, if you get us out, Lord, I will give you a whole container of olive oil. That's all I could promise. And God got us out. And I'll never forget in Toronto, wow. before I was saved, a voice said to me, where is the oil you promised? And I went and I bought it and took it to the Greek Orthodox Church and fulfilled my vow. I learned that many years ago. Wow. And every time I've had a battle in my life, the Holy Ghost would remind me, if you'll make a vow, I'll honor you. And I've made a vow every single time, and God every time gave me a miracle. I believe in this because it's in the Bible. God said to stand before me exactly. and do not stand empty handed. Move well, to the phone. the phone. This is the season. This is the time in which we must while the waters are troubled, yes, Jesus. you must do it. Yes, Jesus. It is so powerful. It is so powerful. The pool of Siloam was touched every Passover. And the first one in the pool would be healed. But also on the Day of Atonement, the priest would dip down in the pool of Siloam. And he would usher his way through the water gate up on the altar on the Day of Atonement. And the people would lift their hands and he would pour that water upon the altar. Mm -hmm. As the people gave their offering, it was a signal. The double portion rains were coming in the first month. This is time right now. That's this right. is the moment. We can't right. wait. Go to the phone and say, this is my atonement offering. Don't miss your moment, saints. Do not miss. This is of the Holy Spirit. I know he's yes. speaking to you. Do not miss this moment.
God will turn things around, I promise you. Let's pray. Come on, you pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, Father, this is the moment in which this is your day. And God, we have fulfilled and we have honored you. Yes, Lord. This is not our day. This is your day, God. Yes, Lord. And God, the people are watching now saying, God, this is your day. We're going to honor you. Yes, as Jesus. they move to the phone, as the Holy Spirit is leading them now, Lord, as they begin to say, this will be the most significant offering I have ever given on the most significant special day, the Day of Atonement. Release yes. the double portion in your holy name. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. We agree. God bless you. I'll see you again on Monday. What a glorious program this has been. And breakthroughs are coming your way in Jesus' name.